Hey, what's up guys? Dave again from Revocation. Um, happy to be at the Guitar World headquarters, giving you guys some more lessons. So today we're gonna be doing um, some more stuff with modes. Last time we did major. Uh, this time I wanna show you um, some minor modes and how you can find the characteristic notes um, and, and use them or exploit them to your own advantage. So here we go. So if we're looking at the um, sixth mode of G major, which would be E minor, um, E Aeolian to be specific. I've got my, my root, my major second, my minor third, my perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor sixth, minor seventh, and back to my root. So this would be considered sort of your natural major scale, one of the first, sorry, natural minor scale, um, one of the first minor scales why most people learn. But if I go, down to A, play all the notes of E Aeolian, but starting on A and ending on A. I get another minor scale, but this time I'm playing in what's called the Dorian mode. Now the Dorian mode, if I look at it as far as finger positions, it's exactly the same as E Aeolian, except there's one difference. Major six. So instead of a minor six, it's got a major six. And that again is that characteristic note. Try and highlight when you're playing in that sound. So for instance, if I was playing some chords, you know, just like kind of like a riff. So I'm hitting that major six in there with the minor third and it gives it that sort of funky kind of sound that you don't get from um, you know the natural minor scale so for instance if I was playing like a natural minor more of like a traditional heavy metal sound but major sixth gives it its own kind of personality so that's something that I like to play around with a lot. Um, it's a scale I like to use. You can do it for, you know, solo stuff. Again, with the riffs or just you know, straight up chords. Really fun scale and, um, you know, just by highlighting that major sixth or, or uh, 13th, whatever you want to call it, you know, depending on the octave that you're in. And you could start phrase with it. Or you could end phrases with it. Go down the octave. So there's a lot of fun you can have with it, and it's just a different, again, a different sound that you can play with um, and really try and highlight that, that 13, and that will tell the listener, oh, okay, now we're in a Dorian sound rather than, you know, a um, Aeolian sound. So just as a point of contrast, um, I'll play an open E and play a little melodic phrase. And then here this would be the same phrase over A. You know, even just, you know, single notes. I might want to make a riff out of that. So that's going from an E Aeolian sound to an A Dorian sound. You can hear how that that over this F sharp over A gives you that you know major sixth Dorian sound as opposed to over E. Now that's the second, minor third, second, root, seventh, sixth, fifth. So yeah, you know, doing different bass notes over it, you can you can uh, play with a couple different um, sounds and get some different you know flavors happening uh, in your playing, going from an Aeolian sound to a Dorian sound, or vice versa. You could even do something where you kind of keep it purposefully you know ambiguous. 
Um, you know, if I just had, you know, if I was an A, I only played the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh, right? that could be a lot of things. It's not until I throw that sixth in there, whether it's a major sixth or a minor sixth, that I'm going to, you know, tell the listener, you know, this is the sound we're in. So, like, for instance, if you were soloing, right, and the bass player was just going... Right, you could play major sixth over that, or that minor sixth over it and play with uh, two different sounds over the same chord progression, which is something that I think is really cool because you kind of take the listener on a little bit of like a journey. You know, first you start maybe in Aeolian, then you move to uh, Dorian and get some different sounds happening.